In a world of YouTube videos that talk about the new Apple Silicon Macs that talk about video and photo production and benchmarks, one software developer brings you the scoop on what the new M1 chip means for us, developers. It's getting cold in here. I think it's this new M1 MacBook Air. It doesn't produce enough heat, so it's really cold. I gotta wear something warm. All right, all kidding aside, finally I got my MacBook Air M1, the Apple Silicon chip. And in this series of videos, I'm gonna be testing out from a developer's standpoint, how this new M1 holds up, whether things even run on there. I'm sure you've seen all the different news about it, whether things are running or not, people are complaining. And a lot of YouTube videos focus on the video creation aspect, the photography aspect, rendering videos and things like that. Not too many videos out there on the development standpoint. So I thought, okay, let's create some. So today I'm setting up a JavaScript development environment on the new M1. What does a JavaScript development environment need? Well, my first and foremost tool that I install on pretty much any new computer is Chrome. I mean, that's kind of a given nowadays because of the development experience you get with Chrome. So I'm gonna go to Chrome, I'm gonna download Google Chrome, and you see this option here. It says, select the version of Chrome that's right for your Mac. Mac with Intel chip, Mac with Apple chip. They already detect the difference here. So I'm gonna select the Apple chip, click allow on that. We need Chrome for the developer tools and that's a must. Here you get some installation options. They look pretty standard. By the way, during the installation, uh, I am seeing that it's working pretty fast, but I wouldn't say it's like incredibly fast. From all the marketing I've seen, I would expect it to finish in a second, but it took three seconds. So kind of disappointing. You're messing up Apple. Google Chrome is on board. What's next? Well, I use my editor the most as far as coding stuff. And my editor right now is Visual Studio Code. I do pretty much all my editing in Visual Studio Code. I also use Visual Studio proper. Right now we can't run Visual Studio on the new M1 chip because as of this time, December 7th, 2020, Parallels and VMware Fusion do not yet support this chip. We'll be back later to examine the speed differences when those are supported. Now I need to get VS Code. So I'm gonna open up Chrome. There it is right there. Let's go ahead and do a search for VS Code. There it is. Let's download for Mac. Now, I understand that there is an Insiders build that works with the M1 chip as of this time right now, but the main stable release doesn't yet work, but it works with Rosetta. I'm just gonna get the regular stable build because it's VS Code. I don't need it to be super fast. I'd like it to be fast, but I'm not doing any kind of performance measurement with my editor. So we're gonna skip that. The performance measuring I am gonna do is building applications, and that comes later on in another video. So I'm gonna get the regular Mac OS version here, the stable build. There's my download, it's a zip file. Let's go ahead and unzip that, and there it is. I'm gonna double click it to run it, and let's see what happens. To open Visual Studio Code, you need to install Rosetta. Now, as you might have heard, Rosetta, or in this case, Rosetta 2, to be more precise, is that translation engine that works on top of M1 chips that translates between the old Intel architecture software and the new hardware. This is kind of a Apple's temporary solution to be able to run those Intel targeted build of software. So that's what it's asking me to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. By the way, if you are interested in some specific comparisons with Visual Studio Code proper versus Visual Studio Code Insiders, which is built for the M1 chip, let me know down in the comments below. All right, macOS is trying to install Apple software. I need to enter my password install the software and let's do that. So that was nice that it was automatic. When it detected that a build was created for an Intel chip, it automatically asked me to install Rosetta. I didn't need to go and download some other software somewhere else on the Apple site or search for it. It automatically did that for me. Nice. So I don't see anything going on right now. My hope is that it actually went ahead and installed everything that I need, but that's not looking the case. So let me double click on VS Code again. 
and open it. What's happening here? Hey, look at that, a bouncing VS Code icon. It's opening. Haha, <laughs> nice, I got VS Code running. This is good, this is all good. I don't know how sluggish it'll be actually using an editor as slight as VS Code, so it's kind of hard to compare. There might be some internal functions that take a while that would be a good performance test, but I don't know of any. Let me know in the comments if you know a good test to be able to test this via Rosetta compared to my VS Code installation on let's say my MacBook Pro from 2019. All right, these notifications have got to go. Let me go to preferences, notifications, turn on do not disturb. VS Code is on. Now, the next biggie is Node.js. So we need to install Node.js on this environment. And I'm gonna do this using the installer because other methods of installing Node.js might also work on a regular machine. But here, I wanna start off with the installer. So I'm gonna go directly to the source. Node.js download, here it is. And I wanna get the Mac OS installer. There it is in my downloads folder. I'm gonna Double click on the package and it says this package will install Node.js. Continue, agree to the terms and go ahead and install. Boom, done. I'll keep the download for now. All right, so we've got Node running. How do we check it? Let's get terminal on here. And I usually like to keep that in the dock. So I'm gonna say that. And I'm gonna run node-version 14.5.1. So this kind of proves right here that this is working. I'm gonna make this font a bit bigger so everybody can see everything. Okay, there's 14.15.1 right there. Node is working. Let's create a directory called code and go into that directory. And I'll create another one called test node. Let's open that up in VS Code. Oh, command not found. So it didn't install the command line extensions like it normally would. Well, that's unfortunate, but that's okay. I can still use, I hope, the finder command to open that folder. And I can just drag that folder over to VS Code to open it up in there. Nothing's in the folder. Let's create a file called index.js. Now I am noticing a slugginess, a slugginess? A sluggishness, the sluggishness, sluggishness. <laughs> when using VS Code, it's not something that's easily identifiable, but it's a perception thing. Not sure what's going on yet. Hopefully this won't plague the system for too long. All right, so this is JavaScript. I wanna just create a function called call fun. Oh gosh, I'm so not creative with these names. How about say hello? And we're gonna pass in a name as a string. We're gonna return hello plus name. And here we're just gonna call say hello and pass in Alex. There's our JavaScript file. I'm gonna press control backtick, run node, and then pass in index.js. Of course, I need to console log this. Let's just do um, const msg and console log MSG. Now I have a feeling this will run just fine because it didn't complain before. And there we go. Hello, Alex. JavaScript environment done. <laughs> as basic as they come. If you do want to see a little bit more on the JavaScript side, let me know down in the comments below. I can do an Angular installation of the Angular CLI. I can do a React, create React app application here as well. And of course, in the next few videos, I'm going to be doing iOS and Android development environments as well as native script and React Native development environments here as well. And I'm gonna be doing, and since .NET is a very popular backend for mobile applications, I'm gonna be doing .NET and Azure SDKs and CLIs here as well. We're gonna be testing all this out. I got my new Mac. I got the Mac Mini coming in the mail as well, so I can do some comparisons with speed there as well. Subscribe to the channel, you'll really help me out. And if you found this video useful or entertaining at least, I try to be entertaining, but sometimes my jokes just don't land. I know they're pretty dry. I'll try to come up with some good jokes, but they're probably gonna suck anyway. But that shouldn't prevent you from subscribing to the channel and giving me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if there is anything specific you wanna see. And I wanna do uh, maybe uh, some kind of a live streaming event where we can actually chat and you can ask me things about the M1 and we can even try it out live. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Later.